let's talk about um, already the tra transfer windows barely open. Two huge transfers into the Premier League, one of which we knew about, and one of which has happened uh, in the style of Liverpool FC quite quickly. Uh, uh, Inga, uh, sorry, um, Erling Haaland and uh, Nunes have arrived at uh, spearhead the front lines of Manchester City and Liverpool respectively. Darwin Nunes uh, they've got these headlines on Thursday. Liverpool chase record £85 million deal for Nunes. Um, Merseyside club favourites to sign the prolific Benfica striker. Bayern Munich's laughable um, £30 million offer for Mane has been rejected. That was Mike McGrath covering about six bases there in the Daily Telegraph. Uh, Klopp's Darwin, he's set to beat United for Nunes, Ken, uh, Ken Lawrence in the sun. By Friday, it was all starting to really um, coagulate. A pacey, ruthless Nunes can be the next Mane, despite the similarities. Liverpool's pursuit of Benfica forward also signals shift in policy. That was James Gearbrandt in the Times. Sunday, Cop have been smart in the market, while United have been left a, a smarting. Uh, Robbie Fowler, uh, headline above his piece in the Daily Mirror. And on we went. No, and, uh, today, of course, we heard that um, uh, the obvious transfer to Erling Haaland had been confirmed by Manchester City. And Mark... Um, for those hoping to m close the gap between uh, themselves and Liverpool and Manchester City, who, of course, stacked up a huge amount of points last season, um, these new spear points for both teams suggest that they're going to have to get their finger out if they're going to close that gap. Uh, Danny, I was one of those who, even on the last day when Man City won the league, was still saying... Imagine what this Man City team would do with a proper number nine, you know, particularly, obviously, in the Champions League. So for them to, to get Haaland, I think, is just sensational, isn't it? Gives him another dimension as well because of his physicality. He's good in the air as well. And ditto, Nunez, very good in the air. Um, and it does, uh, who said that? James Gearbrandt in the Times, you know, a, sh a shift in policy. I think we can say a little bit of a shift, maybe because of his aerial prowess. And we know how good Liverpool are at putting the, those crosses in from deep, from the, from the fullback. And I just looked up Mane's age. If let's say they get 40 million for Mane for a 30 year old, then to mm -hmm. spend double that, and of course, the 85 is not up front. It's more like probably 65, 70 yeah. up front, isn't it? Then add ons and so forth for somebody who's 22. And if Nunes is anything like any other Uruguay, Uruguayan centre forward that we have watched, uh, obviously Suarez being the obvious one and Cavani, then you think that just seems to make a lot of sense on every level for Liverpool, doesn't it? In terms of refreshing their forward line. So a long winded way of saying yes, because obviously Chelsea, the nearest challengers last season, it went disastrously wrong on a football sense with Lukaku. What are they going to do with him it does feel like that these two uh with these signings could well be pulling even further away yeah i mean i spoke to our south american expert last night sean and he says that nunez is more like cavani particularly that he is an absolute monster for work he wants yeah. to work yeah. and work and work and work he can run um he's he's probably better in the air than anybody at liverpool have got at the club at the moment um so whether liverpool lose mane um, or not, or, or Salah, they're still going to have a frightening array of tools uh, up front. D despite, of course, he still has to be, he starts to make that leap from the Portuguese league um, mm. to the Premier League. But a lot of players have done that pretty successfully over the years. They have. Portu Portugal is a good production factory, isn't it? Of great players. And uh, this player certainly sounds a real deal. Can't pretend I've seen a lot of him. Saw the game against Liverpool, obviously. But uh, you read every everything you read, everything you hear suggests... He's going to be uh, brilliant for Liverpool. And I, I think managers suddenly often play a subtle game with their players about whether they want to keep them or whether they don't. And I, I, I think they've probably played that with Mane as well. I don't think they've gone absolutely out on a limb to keep him. Equally, you can see, as I've mentioned, in his body language, he's probably ready for going too. So I don't think anybody's going to kick up a fuss about that. I think it's good for your team, a team like Liverpool, who want to challenge on all levels to refresh... Um, every few years, which they did, uh, they they have done in the past, and it used to be very traditional of them. But you can yeah. go back quite a long time when they used to sell players who you thought were at their peak, and they would just detect that they were slightly past their peak, and they'd sell them. Um, so I I think this is a clever move by Klopp. I would doubt Firmino will be around for much longer, or if no. he is, he's going to be very much a bit part player going forward. But that's good for Klopp. You've got to evolve. You've got to move forward. He says all the nice things about players he's got there, but in the back of his mind, he's thinking, I really need to shift him out in order to get this get this fella in. If I was a Man United fan, I'd be getting seriously concerned now about uh, the lack of action. Those two are two top players, clearly. Where are they going to go now? 
for players who are going to compete. Well, you see them you see them being whispered about now with Robert Lewandowski, who is of course a fantastic yep. player. But Manchester United, I mean, they getting into short termism there as well. And when we see that, you know, that the really big clubs, Liverpool, Manchester City, you know, that the, the purchase of Chuamani this week by Real Madrid shows that the very, very, very big clubs um, are refreshing their squads with younger players, so they don't have to wait. You know, with Chuamani mm -hmm. and uh, Camavinga, it's, it's arguable that Real Madrid have already in their minds. Yeah found a way to replace Modric and Kroos and won't have to worry about their midfield for another decade if both those players work out. And there's no reason to think that they won't. Um, as for Erling Haaland, um, Sean, um, it'd be interesting to see this because I, I, I think that the English clubs all have a slight disadvantage um, over their continental rivals when it comes to the Champions League because they can't just build a team for Champions League because you have to win no. the Premier League first and that's hard. Um, whereas the other t the other big European giants tend to have at least qualification for the Champions League in the bag, and therefore they build their teams to win the Champions League. Um, but Haaland, um, as, as I think Mark mentioned, in the Champions League could be that that this infamous last piece in the jigsaw, because we've seen City dominate games that they've went out in the later, latter stages without turning 15 shots a goal into the three goals yeah. they need to win. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I, I'm a bit old-fashioned. I like to see a focal point striker which you think that uh, sort of Nunes is and Haaland is. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people are saying City will probably have to change their game a bit in order to accommodate him. He want the ball played into his feet, into the box, or in the air, in, into the box. City haven't really been playing like that recently. Can they adapt? Yes, they've got so many very good players. But it will, it will change their style to a certain extent. Nunes will ch change Liverpool's style to a certain extent, which was what was going to make the season... All the more fascinating. But you would guess, as we said about Harry Kane last season, had he gone to City, you would guess he will finish up top scorer in the Premier League because they create so many chances. But I do think they, they may have to play a little bit differently. We saw enough yeah, well, games, didn't we, whether Champions League or in the league with Manchester City, where the balls flashed across the six-yard <coughs> box and you're watching it going, cool, if only a, you know, a number nine of repute, no matter who it was, Harry Kane, Harlan, yeah. anybody, Lewandowski, were there and knock it in. I think next season we will see Charlie some ugly Austin goals. Charlie Austin would get 40 goals Charlie in Austin that team. Would, of course he would do. I think we'll see some ugly goals from City next season, which yeah. always seems to be an affront to the aesthetics of Pep Guardiola. What do you mean we score an ugly goal? Every goal has to be a, a, a masterpiece. I think next season we will score those ugly goals that as you said, when they have 15 shots on goal and they didn't, I mean, how? I mean, I saw both games against Real Madrid. I still can't work out how they lost. I still cannot work out how they lost no. uh, that tie. I think there's much less. That's much less likely to happen next season with Haaland. I think that's just self-evident. 